other views of government. The Enlightenment spreads to France. While the beginning of the Enlightenment may have taken place in England with Hobbes and Locke, it spread to France where the philosophes or philosophers took control of the movement. They believed that nothing was beyond the reach of human reason as they used the scientific method to examine government, law, and society, they called for reforms to protect people's natural rights. Like Locke, their ideas would shift political thought and influence the development of republican government, where people picked their leaders to represent them. One of the earliest French philosophers was the Baron de Montesquieu, in 1748, he wrote The Spirit of the Laws, in which he discussed governments throughout history. He studied the governments of Europe from Italy to England, read about ancient and medieval Europe, and learned about Chinese and Native American cultures. What he learned from all of his studies was that he did not approve of absolute monarchy. He felt that the best way to protect individual rights was to divide the various functions and powers of government among three branches, the legislative or law-making branch, the executive or law-enforcing branch, and the judicial or law-interpreting branch. He believed that each branch of government should serve as a check on the other two, what we call checks and balances, and is a part of the United States Constitution. One of the best-known philosophers took the pen name Voltaire and used his writing to attack the institutions and abuses of the day, going after corrupt government officials and idle nobles. He battled inequality, injustice, and superstition, and detested the slave trade, and was opposed to formal religious practices. In his book Candide, Voltaire supported the idea of religious tolerance which means that people should be able to choose to worship whatever religion they want to. He also believed in freedom of speech and freedom of the press. However, he disagreed with the idea of democracy because he did not believe that the common people were capable of governing themselves. The best type of government was a monarchy that was run by a good and fair king who depended on advisors to help him understand what to do. The most controversial of the philosophes was Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who believed that people in their natural state were actually good, and that the evils of society, especially the unequal distribution of property, corrupted them. Rousseau believed that society placed too many limitations on people's behavior, and while he believed that some controls were necessary, they should be minimal. He believed that the only government that could put these controls in place was one that was freely elected by the people. Rousseau put his confidence in the general will, or the things that are in the best interest of society as a whole, rather than the individual. In 1762, he wrote about his thoughts on government and society in his book, The Social Contract. For Rousseau, the social contract was an agreement between government and society, in which people gave up some natural freedoms in exchange for protection. For the philosophes, their focus was primarily on equality and freedoms for men. While the philosophes did believe that women had natural rights, such as life, liberty, and property, they believed that these rights were limited to the areas of the home and family. By the late 1700s, a small group of women began to protest against this view. One of that group was Mary Wollstonecraft, who argued that women in Britain were being excluded from the social contract itself. She did agree with the idea that a woman's first duty was to be a good mother, but that a woman should be able to decide what was in her own best interest without having to depend on her husband. In her book, A Vindication of the Rights of Women, she argued that boys and girls should receive an equal education because it was only through education that women could learn the tools they needed to participate equally with men in public life. 
She rejected the idea that women were intellectually inferior to men and argued that getting an education would make women better mothers. She opposed the idea of governments being run by monarchs and supported Locke's ideas about natural rights.